Some of the decisions made by the Western powers led by the United States within the last five or six decades regarding the Middle East region are still controversial. They never allowed any of the anti-American rulers to be stable in the region. They tried to end their administrations through direct invasions or by being the indirect cause of internal conflicts. The invasion of Iraq in the early 2000s can be regarded as the biggest military intervention made by the American-led Western allies in the region. This was totally against the two decades long, powerful and rude administration in the region of Saddam Hussein, who was an influential feature in forming many anti-American regimes in the Middle East region. Through this video, we are going to discuss the present stability of the Middle East region and what things would be like if Saddam Hussein had stayed in power. Before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. Who is Saddam Hussein? And what did he do? If you're a viewer born before the early 2000s, you might not know what he did. So I think it's better to have a brief introduction about Saddam Hussein's regime before diving further into the topic. To Saddam Hussein can be considered the greatest ruler of Iraq in terms of the political stability and the prosperity that he brought to the oil-rich nation during his regime. He was born in 1937 as the son of a peasant in the poorest area of the country called Tikrit and grew up in poverty. His father died before Saddam was born and he was raised by his uncle and he had to move to Baghdad for that reason. He became a very politically active figure with his desire to build a prosperous nation for all Iraqi citizens and joined the Ba'ath Party in 1957. He was part of the unsuccessful assassination attempt on Iraqi Prime Minister Abd al karim Qasim in 1959 that was totally unsuccessful and left him wounded. But he was lucky to save his life and fled to Syria and then to Egypt in order to find political protection. During his period in Egypt, he attended Cairo Law College and completed his education in Baghdad Law College after returning to the motherland. Ba'athists were successful in capturing power in Iraq in 1963, and Saddam returned home. Unfortunately, the Ba'athists were overthrown in the same year, and young Saddam had to spend several years in prison for his assassination attempt on the Prime Minister. He escaped from prison and reorganized the Ba'ath Party, becoming one of its leaders, and was an instrumental figure in the coup that captured power again in 1968. Saddam had significant power under the regime of President Ahmad Hassan al-Bakr, and young Saddam led the nationalization of the oil industry of Iraq back in 1972. Saddam became the country's president upon the resignation of al-Bakr. His objectives as president were to supplant Egypt as the leader of the Arabs and to achieve hegemony over the Persian Gulf region. Under his regime, he led an invasion against Iran first and then towards Kuwait. His target was to capture the oil fields of the neighboring nations and both attempts were unsuccessful with the intervention of the global community. Kuwait's invasion resulted in the Second Persian Gulf War in 1991 and he failed to defend against the Allied military coalition. Saddam's crushing defeat in Kuwait resulted in an internal rebellion carried out by both Shis and Kurds against his regime. This can be considered as a darkest point of his administration, during which he tortured thousands of rebels to control the uprising. At the end of the Persian Gulf War, he went for a ceasefire and under its terms and conditions, Iraq was prohibited to produce or possess chemical, biological and nuclear weapons. In addition, many sanctions were imposed on the Iraqi administration, making life within Iraq much harder. UN inspectors wanted to inspect the weapons within Iraq, but he opposed the idea, continuously barring the weapon inspectors' visits. Saddam's plan was to hand over the presidency to one of his sons to continue the brutal administration, putting the lives of innocent Iraqi citizens in danger. After the 9-11 attack, the United States accused Hussein's administration of being a supporter of terrorism by supplying weapons and funds. Under increased stress from the global community, Saddam Hussein allowed UN weapon inspectors to enter the country in 2002. But they were unable to fully cooperate with the investigators and accusations were made against Saddam's administration that they possessed weapons of mass destruction. On March 17, 2003, US President George W. Bush ordered the Iraqi president to step down from his post within 48 hours or face war. 
Whether he left or remained in the country, the American president decided to invade the country to stabilize the political regime of the country and to capture the weapons of mass destruction. It is difficult to rank him as good or bad, as it's a very controversial thing. During the early part of his regime, Iraq became a very politically stable, sovereign state and the Iraqi citizens had the freedom to travel from north to south with confidence. There were no conflicts or tax and Iraqi citizens had the freedom to travel to any neighboring state by car very easily. There was no space for the formation or organization of terrorist groups as the Iraqi army became one of the strongest military units in the region under his leadership. With the nationalization of oil companies, the economy developed. Goods and services were at an affordable price for the Iraqi students, and education of the country was in a developed state. But over time, Saddam Hussein wanted to continue his bloodline in Iraqi politics and did everything to appoint one of his sons as his successor. So, in the latter part, he forgot to serve the people and always focused on securing political power. Especially after the Persian Gulf War, he revealed his true rude nature by torturing rebels as well as innocent Iraqi citizens belonging to ethnic groups like Shis and Kurds. Even before this public uprising, Saddam Hussein tortured the minor ethnic and religious groups within Iraq and tried to make them silent using his military power. Many Kurdish settlements within Iraq were subjected to attacks during his regime, and many Kurdish women were raped by the military forces of Saddam Hussein. He tried to suppress the Shia religious community that arrests. Saddam banned the Friday prayers as well as some of the books belonging to the Shia religion. In reality, people hated this leader, and some Iraqis thought American invasion was a blessing to save them from this tyrant dictator. Iraqi civilians, with the help of American Marines, destroyed Saddam Hussein's statue in Firdos Square in Baghdad as a display of their anger against this tyrant dictator. Even though some people described Saddam Hussein as one of the greatest rulers who stood against the Western powers, there are many black points in his regime. His invasions on the neighboring nations, harming those innocent citizens with his greedy mindset of collecting more wealth from the oil fields belonging to those nations. It was totally unacceptable behavior. And how could we expect political stability in the region from such a ruler who stands against the citizens of his own region? Historically, Kuwait was part of Iraq, and he used this fact to invade the neighboring states. If you search for and watch the video footage of this Kuwait invasion, you can see a mass looting of the wealth of innocent Kuwait people who lived peacefully. Many Kuwait citizens had to flee the country to save their lives. He created huge political and economic instability within the region, which already had its own problems. His acts finally created an opportunity for the Western powers who were eyeing the crude oil in the region. The United States and other Western powers had no direct reason to invade the region until Saddam Hussein finally gave them a reason. With that United States invasion, all of Iraq entered into an economic and political death spiral, finally creating an unstable nation. Previously, we discussed how he attacked minor ethnic and religious groups in the country, giving fewer opportunities to represent their identity within Iraq. As we know, the Middle East region is composed of different ethnic and religious groups, and it's full of conflicts based on those reasons. So, if a certain leader wants to bring stability to the Middle East region, he should possess a better understanding and the ability to treat every ethnic group and religious group with equality. Saddam Hussein primarily lacked those qualities as he treated only Sunni people well under his regime. He attacked Iran, which is a Shia Muslim-dominated country with the aim of blunting the edge of Iranian Supreme Leader Rahala Khomeini's movement and thwarting his attempts to export Iran's Islamic Revolution to Saddam's secular Iraq and the Persian Gulf states. Even though some people tried to interpret more regional stability under Saddam Hussein's leadership, we cannot expect such a thing from a leader like Saddam Hussein, who was more biased towards Sunni Islam. Saddam Hussein's era included so many controversial periods in Iraq's history. But besides him, there is no other influential figure in their politics. First, he made Iraq a sovereign state with good political and military stability and then pushed the whole nation towards destruction by his own hands, again making Iraq one of the weakest nations in the Middle East. 
After the American invasion, he was captured in the city of Ador and sentenced to death by an Iraqi court for the crimes that he carried out against humanity. If that hadn't happened, he would be 85 years old today and ruler of Iraq for almost 47 years. Even if he were not, one of his sons would have become the president of Iraq, having a harder stance against Western powers like his father. Finally, we should mention one more thing. Since the removal of his government, Iraq has not since seen prosperity again. Iraq declined day by day and has not seen prosperity again since. As a final result, small terrorist groups are now controlling different parts of the country, decentralizing the administration. Even though there is a central government, there is a big question about its acceptance in different regions of the country. When George Bush threatened to invade Iraq, Saddam Hussein warned about his approach. He said, you do not understand Iraq. I am the only person keeping these people each other. If you take me out, the blood of your soldiers will run like rivers through our streets. Sectarian violence will erupt out of control. It will be utter chaos. His prediction was extremely accurate. Everything turned upside down in Iraq after this American invasion. Terrorist groups became active in the country, torturing and spreading terror among innocent citizens. We cannot conclude that Saddam was a good ruler, but he maintained some kind of stability within Iraq even through his tyrant dictatorship. So that is the end of today's story, and it's difficult to label Saddam Hussein as a good or bad leader when analyzing the things that happened before and after the American invasion. Two decades have passed since this American invasion and Iraq is now a totally failed state. It is fair if someone thinks that Saddam's dictatorship was better than this. What do you think about Saddam Hussein's leadership? Would the Middle East be more stable if he was in power? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting political stories. See you guys in the next video. Goodbye.